Hey, so today we're going to be talking about post-colonialism and Canadian literature. This presentation seeks to give further understanding to what post-colonialism is and how it has impacted Canada. Along with this, I will be exploring in greater detail the effects that colonisation has had on Canadian literature and identity as a whole. I will be evaluating some parts of Margaret Atwood's text, Survival, as it has a lot to say about her own individual identity and the original state that Canadian literature was in before colonisation. So firstly, let's talk about post-colonialism. Post-colonialism is something that is and will probably continue to be debated topic as it has been a factor that affects and the majority of the globe. Due to the transitions of different nations, it is clear that there is only one possible option when it comes to the growth of multiple communities. Uh, that opinion is to explore and, um, and expand to new places. It makes sense to expand in this way, and as a result of this, many different nations such as those in Europe have come in contact with multiple cultures. It is all well and good to expand as a nation and take up land elsewhere, but as, a, as historians it's essential to look at the effects that colonisation has on these other cultures and groups of people. For the necessities of others, it can ultimately have a strong and life-changing impact on the people who have um, already inhabited that country. This is something that has um, happened in areas of the world in different countries at different times throughout history. It can change the way they think, the way they dress, the way they feel about normal day-to-day -day things. It can even affect their religion, way of life, recreation, and um, their literature. So the term um, post-colonialism emerged um, around the uh, 1980s when historians were engaged in related topics of the past. So let's break this down. What is post-colonialism? Uh, personally, I don't think it is something that can be confined to just one definition as it can be related to so many areas of history and is something that is ongoing. We live in a post-colonial society and as it has shaped the societies we live in. Uh, it is a means of analysing and evaluating cha changes that countries have gone through in the past. Uh, I feel it's stated best in The Empire Writes Back. Um, it says, we use the term post-colonial to cover all the country, uh, sorry, all the culture affected by the imperial process from one moment of colonisation to the present day. Uh, when colonisers expanded um, to take over other countries, they would ultimately implement their lifestyles and ways of doing things. Um, one thing, once this action has taken place, post-colonial studies is a method of examining the after effects of this transition from one state to another. So post-colonialism is a factor that influences the functions of a nation. Um, when looking at a country's newly found position, it can be said that their basic needs are being controlled by the colonisers as a means of taking over the country in which the original inhabitants lived in. Um, this does in fact bring forth the ideals behind um, capitalism. Essentially, when, um, when basic needs are not, uh, cannot be met properly by the means of the individual or country, uh, sorry, community, then it is because of the suppressor is manipulating, um, manipulating this. This is a concept known as neocolonialism. It's both a practice and a psychology. Um, so just like a quick little helpful kind of, I guess, analogy, uh, for understanding what post-colonialism is. So say you have to live in the same house for 10 years and all of a sudden three people come in and live there too. They use your food, equipment and come and sit on your couch right in your spot. And no matter what, there is there is no real way of getting rid of them. They never really um, tell you why they are there and they're just, well, there. Um, then after a few years of them being there and sitting, setting themselves up in your space, they decide to get up and head back home as they have achieved what they have set out to do. They might leave just a couple of them there or whatever, but you won't notice it as much due to the change. So they have come through and changed a different aspects of your living room and even the way you do things. But for some reason, you don't really mind the changes, but you can't quite remember how you used to do things either. You're just left now wondering what or who you are because the ways you used to do things have been altered because of this new style of living and functioning that has been introduced. This is when individuals are left in a state of ambivalence. Um, they are in a position where they want to go back to how things were to find their original identity, but ultimately the new ways um, that have been brought through in seem fit and are just normal to them now. 
This can be the same when it comes to literary technique. Uh, comes to liter literary techniques and um, style. Once a new idea is brought forth and authors begin to use it progressively, this can be the main influence on the change in literary styles. Um, so for some, it is a clear um, that identity can be found through written texts. The texts written by a culture are personal and usually about something that has gone on in that country's history or it is about how the land has come to be or how the people lived the way they did. This will be further discussed through the works of Margaret Atwood. So moving on, we're going to talk now about the colonial history of Canada. So now that we have the basis understanding of post-colonial um, we can now move on into the effects that it has on literature in context to Canada. Um, so literature is a key part of any civilization. It's an integral part of one's culture and heritage. Canada's history is fascinating and I want to look at the colonial history um, of Canada first to gain a bit more of a context so we can go into um, the literary side of things after. So what were the changing factors and how has this now shaped Canada's lit? literature or how it is viewed now. So firstly, um, the Paleo-Indians inhabited um, Canada. It was not until the 15th century when French and British explorers um, came to take over. There were different colonies that were formed and this um, turned into a bi uh, bilingual um, multicultural federation. Um, from one rule to another, Canada eventually ended up uh, being under British rule after many wars. Due to all that was going on, it was clear that this is what happened, uh, sorry, what helped influence the reshaping of Canadian culture. As things continued to progress, the influence of the French um, was still lingering, and now, due to the diversity of ra races, Can Canada had a combined set of customs, not to mention the large influence of America. In terms of literature, it, um, it followed very similar patterns to that of Great Britain. Uh, or at least it started to, um, and to the opinion of um, some, was a thing that had progressively grown over time. Um, so not only is, but America had a significant influence over the writing style, but the general core of what was being written about in poems and works of fiction typically remained to be about the land and the survival of the people through the harsh conditions um, of the country. All of this can be created, uh, can ultimately create multiple identities or the sense of no core identity with anything to do with the original state of the country um, and its people. It ultimately leaves people feeling isolated. So in terms of Can uh, Canadian literature, it is hard to say what the central identity of it is because it has shifted and changed due to colonisation. Um, Margaret Atwood, in her text Survival, a thematic guide to Canadian literature, explains what Canadian literature is, or what it originally was before British colonisation, uh, sorry, British um, colonialism. Um, when this text came out in 1972, it was quite, a, quite abrupt in its delivery of what Canadian literature is. It has been read and taught and aids in the self-discovery of Can uh, Canadians through the structure and styles of their literature. So, um, Atwood, oh, sorry. Oh, there we go. Um, Atwood highlights the essence of what Canadian texts were and she states that their type of literature is centred on the land that is around the people. It's essentially about survival, but not in a sappy heroic sense, but rather if you have the will to survive, then you better do everything that you can to beat the odds. So she uses um, the themes of survival to indicate that this is the central symbol for Canada. Um, so it is undoubtedly survival, bare survival in the face of hostile elements and or natives coming out a place and a way of keeping alive. She takes this characteristic of literature and highlights it in aspects of, in the aspect of the change in society from a post-colonial perspective. Um, for French Canada, after the English took over, it became cultural survival, hanging on as a people, retaining religion and a language under alien government. It would allow um, for further understanding to be taken as she really explores the factors that have changed Canada from one rule to another. To add to um, it, to add, it is stated most effectively in um, narratives of Canadian literature. Um, 
when addressing modern forms of Canadian literature. What is most re remarkable about modern can Canadian short fiction is its ability to accommodate a professional scepticism um, about truth and meaning while continuing to explore distinctively Canadian issues of cultural and historical kind. Basically, uh, it's saying that even though there has like there has been colonial influence, most modern fiction is holding true to the core values upheld by those who wrote before. It's in a slightly different way, but it is still evident um, if it's searched for. So I guess this is talking more about like um, the core um, authors and stuff who are holding true to that um, piece of identity that they have. Uh, so Aitwood brings further... Uh, sorry, forth her own theory as to the post-colonial state of Canada. Uh, so let us suppose, for the sake of argument, that Canada as a whole is a victim or an oppressed minority or exploited. Let us suppose, in short, that Canada is a colony. A uh, partial definition of a colony is that it is a place from which profit is made, but not by the people who live there. The major, uh, sorry, the major profit from a colony is made in the centre of the empire. Mm -hmm. So here she is referring to the British Empire that has taken over control of individuals' basic needs and general um, civilization means of function. She continues, um, uh, that is what colonies are for, to take money from the mother, mother country. She is actually highlighting an aspect of kind of a Marxist theory here and the ideology of capitalism um, a little bit with what she's saying for British rule to come over and take charge in her in her eyes was a means of developing an economy to better Britain as a whole um, to come in and dictate the suppressed meant that they could potentially make them do whatever they wanted really um, or at least that's what it kind of felt like to her I mean they're the the suppressed um, so a greater sense of being marginalized is evident here in her theory and as an even greater result of this, she is left questioning whether she is British, French or Canadian or a mix of all of them due to the historical events that have taken place during colonisation. Um, from one impact, it can be stated that the nation of Canada was sensing a loss of identity. Um, this is a core theory behind Aitwood's um, argument. So Aitwood makes a really great point regarding the, um, the structure of a culture. Um, she says that every culture or country has a um, significant single unifying or informing symbol at its core. So she makes the note of saying that, yes, this is a generalisation um, in what she said, like in her quote. But as she begins to elaborate on her point, there is a lot more to that um, and it makes a lot of sense. Uh, so these symbols, um, being a word, phrase, idea, image, or a mixture of all or just some of them, function like a set of be of set of belief or beliefs. Um, and essentially, this is what holds the country together and gives its people identity through a common theme. Um, so this is why Eight Woods highlights uh, the original theme and symbols of Canadian spirit through its literature. She feels so strongly about the structure and formatting of Canadian writers and how they have written that she uses their works as a means of holding on to the original distinctiveness of her country. Um, to add to this, Canadian literature was influenced by its socio-political context, this meaning that there was a variety of genres um, that eventually were created from geographical and histori historical events that involved the British and French remaining cultures. Um, with the with the British Empire's rule for so long, it can be stated that that forms of hybridity took place uh, not only in the sense of like crossbreeding and stuff, so like one race uh, mixing with another one um, to produce uh, more people, but with the blending of literature in schooling systems. This was from uh, Great Britain and America. Um, Aitwood describes her own relation to foreign texts in a manner in which she says that she didn't feel as though they were real. So while she was going through school, essentially, she was actually having to learn a lot of British literature and not so much um, from the Canadian side of things. Um, there would always be a complication in the story, but it would, you know, be predictable because the hero was always going to come through with strength and courage to press on. So this is, you know, the British side of things. 
Um, and it's even similar in the American style as well. So when she was reading Canadian works of fiction in her schooling years, the texts were very gruelling and centred on survival. So again, that key theme. Uh, so not in a light way either. The characters were pushed to their absolute limits. The dangers outlined in these texts were just like the real world to her. So the environment that she lived in. It essentially matched the land she actually lived in rather than the over-the-top fiction stories written by foreign writers. She does state that because of the survival nature of the Canadian texts, they were rather negative as opposed to that of fairy tale stories. Um, with other texts from, Brit uh, from British origin or an American origin, it is clear that there is a significant heroic protagonist. A complication will arise and, yeah, so the issue would be solved by the efforts of the hero. Um, so that's basically the structure of theirs. And so that comparison can be definitely drawn from, uh, from Aitwood's work. So identity is imperative to one's own understanding, sorry, one's own sense of belonging. This can be the case when it is expanded to a larger scale, such as with a country and its people. When it comes to a colony that has only take, that has taken over another land, uh, others' lands, it is clear through history that the original inhabitants are affected by the new wave of culture and, and style. One such aspect of this change is literature. Literature is a part of a community, group, culture or race that can be seen um, by someone by the core identity of a nation. Um, when the colonizer invades and influences the colonized, writing styles and genres used, it can essentially alter the original intention of what the person was trying to write about. So like you've got, you know, your Canadian authors, but once this new wave starts coming in, they do subtly start to get influenced, and it's a very gradual and slow process. So this forms a hybrid style of text, um, essentially. So hopefully a greater understanding um, has been created um, and has been shown from what post-colonialism actually is and to how it uh, has affected Canadian literature and its, form, um, its formation over time. Post-colonialism can be a bit tricky um, to get one's head around, but with the basic understanding in place, it is easier to see the key aspects of, say, ambivalence, uh, hybridity, and the effects that change has on one's own identity and the identity of a nation. So that core, um, core theory coming through there as well. Uh, so for the examples given through Aitwood's controversial text, Survival, it is clear that national and, ide and individual identity is something that does get affected as she describes her loss of identity with Canadian literature. Uh, for her and for others, this is a central element to, Can uh, to Canada as a nation and change has uh, definitely taken place over time due to the influences of colonizers. Identity is a sort of uh, after, is a sort after, com sort after component in one's life and can be hard to maintain through colonial change. Um, yeah, so I hope you've uh, gained some understanding of what I've uh, basically presented. Um, just here to finish, we've just got my references used in the presentation. So they're just all listed there. Um, so what I have used is I've quoted from some of these and also my, I, my understanding from that has been um, pulled out and referenced um, from these texts. So yeah.